Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another week of the Fourth and Long Podcast. Uh, my name is Ross Allen. Of course, I am your host. And today, I am once again joined by the... I don't know. I don't really got anything good about saying, but here's Jalen Johnson. What's up, Jalen? <laughs> Hello, everyone. All right. So uh, we got we got a little we got a good podcast going today. We um, got a few segments, uh, one new segment that we're actually going to start off with. Um, so hope you guys like it. Uh, appreciate you guys tuning in uh, for another week of some sports talk. So let's just get this thing started. The new segment we're bringing on is called the Things in Sports We Hate segment. Uh, pretty much what this is going to be is that um, every week we're going to come up with something that from that week in sports that we hate. And my thing that we hate or that I hate is making headlines and stories out of nothing. I feel like it happens just so often nowadays, huh? Yeah, it happens way too often. It happens about at least once a week. There's, so there's no getting past it. It's so shitty. Like, like um, what I saw last week's um, college football, it was Texas Tech playing um, Clemson. Um, and then there's, a, you know, you got, got the pregame uh, interviews during the week. Uh, they interviewed this Texas, uh, Texas Tech lineman, and he said that they're going to be Clemson. And they mm-hmm. made a whole uh, story on that on Bleach Report and ESPN. No yeah, shit. Yeah, because I guess that's he's a going, big thing. Right? No shit he's going to say they're going to be Clemson. What do what, what you want him to say? Oh, um, yeah, I think um, I think Vegas is right on this one. Yeah, um, I think Clemson is going to take this dub. No, no, <laughs> I think we're going to get destroyed. Right? No. Oh, no, I think this is going to be a very competitive matchup all the way through, but Clemson's going to pull it off at the fourth quarter because that's what... The, no, no one's going to fucking say that. It's yes, your team. Of course, your gonna team's going to win. It's, it's just yeah, it's confidence. Like, exactly. I'm not going to stay. I'm going to lose. I'm going to win. I don't care if we're going to get blown up by 50. We're going to win. <laughs> yeah, see, the argument against is some people might say, like, oh, um, probably should say that in public just... Just compliment um, the team and move on, but th- this still isn't saying much. Saying you're going to be clumsy and pull the upset isn't saying much. Another thing is uh, players yeah. making headlines by saying that they want to have a good season. Uh, this was example because uh, it- it's Bleach Report. They're they're a good website. They're a fun sports website. But half the shit they, they send out notifications for is so meaningless. Like, Very um, meaningless. last week, um, for, um, Hopkins, uh, Marcy for Texas for the, for the Texans, he had in the locker room goals for the season, and he said he's going to have the best receiving season in NFL history, something around those lines. That's not a headline. That's not news. That's just, a, just an elite player having confidence in themselves. That's all it is. Exactly. And it's like nowadays, it's, oh, it's being cocky and uh, that's not what we need in the sport. It's and, oh, that's cocky. a bad, it's bad for the kids coming up. And it's like, that's it's confidence. It's You're not, supposed to have confidence in yourself. It's not bad for the kids. <laughs> Fuck them kids. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But it's like people having confidence in themselves just to play. Right. And the, their ability to play be better than other people. Knowing you're better than somebody isn't a bad thing. No, it's If you're going to be not. say you're better than somebody, you speak it into existence. That's one thing that I, I love that Conor McGregor always says. Speak it into existence and you can make it happen. But if you don't think about it, say it, and you don't think about it, you're not going to do it. What, so, so do you think I early just in the year, yeah, Conor talked himself, I'm going to kick the shit out of this old man. Probably, <laughs> probably. You honestly, I'm pretty sure at some probably. point he was like, "I could do whatever the fuck I want to do." Uh, and Connor, so, yeah, you know, <laughs> he proved it right year, then and there. We covered this like a week or two ago. How he assaulted the old man like at the beginning of the year. <laughs> Fucking yeah, last much. year a news story came out that he was <laughs> that the mob in in um Ireland put out a hit for him or some shit like that. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> Connor, dude. We, we, we spoke about this last time, but maybe, maybe don't do shit where the mob is coming after you. <laughs> that That's probably, I feel like that's the one thing we should, you probably shouldn't talk about. You probably shouldn't talk about something that's going to make the mob come after you. 
that that's um, a very good piece of advice uh jalen um kind of yeah just, just shocking that you would even say something like that i know right <laughs> <laughs> so moving on from just these bullshit headlines and news stories and just shit for people to click on to get more views what do you hate jalen oh <laughs> uh, you know i hate ties not even just saying that as a Cardinals fan, but I feel like ties in general, I feel like you shouldn't have ties in professional sports. But like there yes. should be a winner and a loser. I feel like it, overtime, just make it another overtime, how they do it in college. I mean, not exactly how they do it in college. They just keep playing quarters until that, that touchdown is scored or something. Yeah, even I just if, feel like... I'd be cool if they yeah, did like college. The college overtime rules are way better than the <laughs> NFL overtime rules. I'll, I've yeah. been saying that for a couple of years now. I'll keep saying it. College mm -hmm. rules are in almost every aspect. The college rule book is better than the NFL rule book besides exactly. targeting, which is yeah. another thing um, we'll get into another time because I could talk a whole segment on that. <laughs> oh, don't don't even give me fucking start. Targeting is yeah, horse targeting shit. is something. It, it's one of the but... worst. It's one of the worst rules in sports. Period. Yes, but it is. ties, ties, yes, ties. I just feel like it kind of just it stops the game. It kind of both teams have been fighting so hard to be like, oh, oh, we tied. Oh, we ran. You out don't of know time. who's better. Yeah. Oh no, time's out. Let's start another quarter. Up. And they're saying, oh, players being tired and uh, more time for injuries. But I was like, the game's not finished. It's still. I was like, because then. Yeah. Yeah, I guarantee those same players at the end of the year who complain about being tired and getting injured are going to be the same ones who complain that we didn't make the playoffs because the game ended in a tie that we could easily won. Exactly. Well, you know, going because, back to that Cardinals yeah. Detroit game in week one, uh, mm -hmm. Detroit um, just is proving that they are the worst franchise in NFL history. Uh, I mean, they, they did beat the Chargers today. Yes, <laughs> they did. I am so <laughs> fucking confused how they could I don't, I don't blow, understand. <laughs> a, a blow a game in tie with the Cardinals and then beat the Chargers 13-10. to 10. How does yeah. that happen? I, I have no idea. The, that makes no weird. sense. If, if Is Melvin like, Gordon, the Melvin Gordon situation coming back to bite them? I don't know, man. But for everyone listening, just if you need one takeaway from this entire show, sports are weird. And bullshit happens all the time. And Every week. It, it's, it's what makes it exciting. But it's also what makes it mm -hmm. extremely aggravating. In, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah, fuck ties. Um, what do you think they should do? Uh, should they change the NFL overtime rules? To, to more like college? I feel like they should, to, I feel like they should change it more. Playoff rules also being in the regular season? Yeah, I feel like it should be yeah more like the playoffs or uh, the playoff rules. Just keep going until somebody wins. Exactly. But most of the time, when teams ended up losing the game, it's like there's ten seconds left, so they kicked a absurd field goal, and so time runs out, or um, they're like right next to field goal range, mm -hmm. and so they had to throw up a hail mary, and that's why they didn't score a touchdown. Yeah. And so I feel like if they just let it keep going and just add it out of the quarter, mm -hmm. I feel like most of the games when it last a whole nother quarter exactly. i feel like most of the games would end pretty soon into that second uh yep. given quarter because most games are like both teams are just going at it and they get really close but it's all or nothing in those games so then at that time teams are just launching it as far as they can or trying to kick like 60 yard field goals when their kicker can only kick a 40 yard field goal if and so i feel like yeah i agree with that yeah. point every time so i feel like just goals, adding it yeah at least somewhat recently they changed it where um uh, um, the, I agree with the the somewhat recent change in the rules where um, it's not just sudden death overtime. I used to hate that, mm -hmm. you know, back earlier in this decade um, through two thousands and um, before then. If you just kick, uh, you kick a fifty yard field goal in overtime and win. I like that they at least change it to you have to score a touchdown or a two point convert or or a safety to automatically win the game. But and field goal does automatically win. That was a good change. But um, yeah, I like that. I, I still uh, think college is better. Yeah, um, I still think the college rules are better. Overtimes, or why I see in sports, I don't even watch the sport. I hardly consider it one. But soccer, I see a bunch of ties all the time. The the yeah. great sport that, you, that it's you never see a tie-in is hockey. They do a great job with their overtime. Um, 
for those that don't know, at the end of regulation, if a team is if um, a team in the NHL is tied, they go into five minutes of three on three um, hockey. So normally, it's five on five, but they move into three on three sudden death hockey. At the end of that five mm -hmm. uh, minutes, if no one scores, they go into a shootout um, where yep. you originally gave three turns um, each on team and it's best of three. And then um, if you tie after that best of three, you just keep on going until someone scores and someone doesn't. It's good overtime. It's really exciting. Yeah. It's one of my favorite parts it, about it, hockey. It, is a, is a, it's a what I feel like three. most sports should be like. It's exactly. going back and forth until a team win. Exactly. But, yeah, that is that is the new things in sports we hate corner. Um, might change the name a little bit, see what flows. But uh, this is what we got right now. And, yeah. There's a lot of things I hate in sports, but also a lot of things I love. That's why I watch it, of course, right? Yep, exactly. So let's move Ups and on. downs. Move on from that to uh, our NFL recap. Um, start us off. <laughs> ah, shit, dude. The Patriots are... Oh, <laughs> the Patriots Antonio Brown's so not good. who we thought he was. We, we thought he was going over there to help us all out, but he's... I don't know. Why are the Patriots so good? I, I I understand. Um, today they just thrashed the Dolphins forty three to nothing. <laughs> I mean, the Dolphins are tanking. The Dolphins are obviously Let's tanking. Not talk about if Dolphins, you get beat by forty plus points, but they still <laughs> manhandled the Steelers thirty three to three. That that was impressive. That that is a statement that, that if impressive. I've ever seen one in my life. Um, yeah. Um, is NFL fans, especially non Boston fans. And fans, I hate the Patriots like every good NFL fan should. Um, we're fucked. Yeah. This yeah, is no, going to be they, they look They look dangerous. Oh, this is going to be like a 13-3 and three, uh, fucking Patriots, dude. Yeah, because they went, won 33-6 to six last week. Yep. Mine's and this well week just... they won, what, 42-0? to 43-0. nothing. Um, the defense nothing. had two touchdowns. They had four interceptions and two pick sixes. That one-handed pick six by Jamie Collins. Oh, my fuck. He jogged the last 30 yards. No one was coming to get him. They had given up at Oh, that no. Point. They had the lineman. He had to high step over, but that was about it. That was about it. Oh, that was. <laughs> um, yeah. Men don't give up. Let's get, of course, That's we the one thing a, we learned. <laughs> yes, yes. Of course, um, you know, you guys know this, you know, through the podcast, through, through three episodes so far, through our Twitter account, we are a very professional <laughs> Radio show, <laughs> very professional and absolutely nothing but the facts, <laughs> unbiased, <laughs> <laughs> unopinionated, uh, yeah. unopinionated podcast. Um, yeah, I could say that without laughing, but yeah, um, exactly. Of course, <laughs> um, uh, one of the commandments we have for this podcast is "fuck Boston," and fuck um, Boston. you guys could say that I could get some. Some, you know, whiny ass Patriots fans trying to talk shit um, about, oh, you're um, you're biased, uh, you're just salty. Yeah, a little bit. I'm a little salty. But yeah, the, I'm, I'm proud. I'm proud to dis just say fuck Boston in every I sport. Am. Fuck them. Because I feel like after Belichick and Tom Brady are gone, you guys are going to be trash. You, you guys are going to be the Dolphins. Let's hope so, <laughs> dude. I, I really in, – in 50 years when Tom Brady – um, when Tom Brady's cybernetics wears out and he has to retire from football. Um, I'm going to laugh. I'm so scared. I'm going to laugh. The Patriots are going to be good <laughs> for like another five years just to spite the rest of the league. Yeah. And we could all trace this back to the Jets. No, the Browns. Belichick used to be coached as Browns. Yeah. Fuck the Browns. But you know who I blame? By transitive property. Drew Bledsoe. I'd blame Drew Bledsoe for not being better and having Tom Brady be traded no. for somebody else do you for know, assets. Do you know who I blame? <laughs> I blame the Jets for injuring Drew Bledsoe. Exactly. The if Jets didn't do that, brought Drew Tom Brady to into this world, and they haven't been able to take him out. <sighs> yeah. yeah. You have to follow up. If you're going to bring him into this world, you got to take him out. Fuck you, Jets. Okay, Fuck you jet. moving on from the Patriots. Um, Kyler Murray might be good. 
Um, just a little bit. Just, just a little bit, right? Uh, today, um, of course, last week he um, led a. Do we still call it a comeback, even though they tied? I mean, yeah, it was a pretty big comeback. Okay, he they came he just back. Just wasn't a comeback win. Okay, so the last week against the Lions, the Cardinals came back to not lose. Yeah. Tied the game 27-27. Yeah. Um. Today they um the Cardinals played in uh, Baltimore. Lost 23-17. Uh, Kyler Murray went 25 for 40 with 350 yards, but no touchdowns, but also no interceptions. So that's, mm -hmm. yards wise that's pretty, pretty damn good. He's the first quarterback to throw for 300 yards in his first two games since Cam Newton in 2011. Huh. But also, we know where Cam Newton is now. Uh, washed up. Yeah, but and, back uh, in 2011... Overrated. Oh, no, oh, he was great in 2011. No, he was uh, good all the way up in 2015 until the Super Bowl. Yeah. The Broncos, I think, could take the take ownership of destroying Cam Newton's career because Cam Newton yeah. has not been the same since he didn't go for that fumble. Mm-hmm. Agreed. It, it's just how it is, but you know, of course, uh, Kyler Murray had another good game today. He got some. He he has a passing yards. Um, he's had interception troubles in week one, but he also got um. One, he also threw it for a touchdown. So um. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see how that array offense works out. It, it's really interesting. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a project, but I feel like it might come out good in the end. They're staying competitive with all these teams. Like, Baltimore blew out the Dolphins last week. I know it's the Dolphins, but at the same time, I feel like they kind of – they stayed there until the end. Like, it was uh, – they were competitive until the end of the game, yeah, no, this which is, is something they couldn't do last season. The Cardinals' offense is definitely something uh, to keep your eye on for, um, you know, weekly. We'll see where they are, like, halfway through the season. Um, you yep. know, going along with the um, Arizona Baltimore game, yeah, uh, Lamar Jackson's still good. Um, still he, good. He stayed hot from last week. Of course, um, he threw like five. He had five total touchdowns last week, like four hundred something yards, just something stupid. Um, this week yeah. he went twenty four for thirty seven. Um, didn't have the yards as he did last week. He only threw only threw for two hundred seventy two yards. Um, but he got a couple tugs, no interceptions. Um, that seven touchdowns on the year, no interceptions. That's that's good stats right there. Yeah, he's doing great. I feel like everyone doubted him, and a couple people like me who did believe that he was a great quarterback, I was starting to get their money's worth. He's he's showing out now. Of course, um, Marquise Brown, Hollywood, um, also had a respectable game today. Um, eight catches for eighty-six yards. Nothing like he had last week, but is is a rookie. Um, eight for eighty six is solid. He did have the game winning catch though. He uh, caught a pass for about uh, well, I forgot how many yards it was exactly. I think it was about fifteen uh, on the sideline to um, get the first down to where they were able to run the clock out. Solid. So uh, he ended up having a pretty good game. And sometimes that's better than a touchdown. At least in in the case of this game, it was. Uh, moving on from that, another game that took place today um, that we briefly mentioned earlier. Uh, the Chargers, dude, um, losing ten to thirteen to the Lions. Phil Rivers Very coming surprising. in the opposite of clutch, um, attempting a game-winning drive in the fourth quarter. He throws a pick. No, there's no touchdowns on the game. It was just obviously there was no offense. Um, yeah. It was a brilliant. Darius Slay came out with the game-winning interception. Darius Slay to, is one of the better the quarterbacks of the league. Without a doubt. Exactly. So, you know, you can't really say lines. anything bad about him, but. No. Yeah. Oh, man. It, yeah. Um, Austin Eckler also had another solid week. Um, 17 for 66 isn't the best, but yeah, he had the the, um, the Chargers only touchdown. He's uh, definitely been carrying the load, um, trying to pick up from Melvin Gordon. Phil Rivers um, yeah, he's actually a good had the, the highest average um, today. He had one rush for 12 yards. So that's a 12-yard average. I um, got to put a little, little respect to that, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's mobile. <laughs> About as mobile as Big Ben is nowadays. Sweet fuck. 
Let's see. Uh, speaking of Big Ben, there are a couple of quarterbacks injured today. Uh, ben Roethlisberger went out of the game at halftime with a elbow injury. Elbow. And Drew Brees left the game today after the first quarter with a hand injury. Uh, he was yeah, he hit it right on. Uh, able to grip a ball. Somebody tell happened. Yeah. Yeah. Aaron Donald gave him a really hard high five in the pocket. Yep. Old quarterbacks are starting to get hurt. Maybe it's starting to be the passing of the torch. Oh, please, please, Tom Brady. Please, Tom Brady. No, I don't think Tom Brady's getting hurt. <laughs> no, he's not getting hurt. He's a cyborg. He's not human. That dirty vegan not is not human. <laughs> Fuck you, TB12, that whole program he has. Yeah. I need to stop talking about Good the Patriots. Yeah. That's going to sound like a salty bitch. Tired of <laughs> oh, Barry McCaughan you're seeing right there. Jeez. I think he's the one person <laughs> that hates the Patriots more than anyone. I respect it. Me too. Um, of course. Uh, everyone knows this, but Kirk Cousins is still extremely overpaid. <laughs> oh, yeah. The internet thrashed him today after today's Man, game. He gets thrashed every... It wasn't even prime time this week and he's still fucked up. I don't know how you do it. That, I don't know how still... he does it at all. That that contract was three years, eighty four million guaranteed, something like that. Um, that has to be that has to go down in history as one of the worst contracts um, in NFL history, without a doubt. No, someone uh, still offered Jamarcus Russell a contract in the first place. Oh, you mean the dude? Oh, man, I love this story about Jamarcus Russell. Um, this is with the Raiders, I believe it was. I think it was during the season, but he was notorious for not watching film or just giving a fuck about anything. And mm-hmm. so the Raiders sent him home with um, tape on their um, upcoming um, upcoming team. I, I forgot who they're playing, but they sent him home to go study the the, the film. And so come back. To, he uh, he comes back to to um, practice the next day. Uh, the, the coaches, Raiders coaches, ask him um, what he saw on the film. He just kind of gives him really general and vague answers. And then the coaches tell him <laughs> that there is nothing. On, they they gave him a blank tape. <laughs> oh, that that to be that had to hurt. <laughs> oh. had to hurt. That's just embarrassing, dude. How you not even turn it? How did you go that far to not even? Yeah, like there, thirty seconds. Between, like, okay, this is blitz package. There's a difference between like you know just scanning through the film. Every every athlete's done that. You know, we haven't really felt like watching film, so we'll just skip through it. Try to get the gist of it. And just get get a glance at the uh, at the team, but he didn't even yeah, put just so you know, the a tape bit. and watch the first five seconds of it. He didn't even put it in. You can have at least put it in, just had it playing in the background. Exactly. You didn't have to watch it. You could just have it playing in the background. You just glance at it a couple times where you're eating all those hot dogs. Oh, that fat fuck. Yeah. Three hundred pound quarterback. Of course, he's not as good as a hefty lefty Gerald Lorenzo. Rest in peace. God bless Rest his in soul. Peace. Yep. Goat. God bless his soul. The hefty lefty. Goat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but some interesting uh, stories uh, coming out of the league today. Um, this is going to be a crazy ass season. Um, it's only week two, and it, I, I just, I'm already losing control. One more thing I want to uh, talk about what just happened uh, before we start recording. Um,. Ref ball, big time. Uh, the Broncos, who are playing mm-hmm. the Bears in Denver, you know, for the Broncos home opener, uh, kind of just a shit game. It was six three halftime for the Bears. Um, going, the Broncos are down thirteen six, driving um, late fourth quarter within two minutes, score a touchdown uh, with like with thirty seconds to go. Then they line up for the two point conversion. And so at this point, they're down 13 12. They line up for the two point conversion and go for the win. Um, they get flagged for a delay game. So then they bring out Brad McMass. Normally, he's j- he just splits the gooch with, without, uh, without issue. The field goal, mm-hmm. the PAT, goes wide right. But the Bears lined up offsides. So then the Broncos have, they go for the two point conversion again from the one, get it. And then kick the ball off um, from the 25. Uh, the, the, just one of the most atrocious roughing the passer calls I have ever seen in my entire life. It was a perfect hit on the quarterback by um, Bradley Chubb that forced an incompletion. 
the ED even hit the head. And they called it roughing the passer, which of course moved up to uh, their uh, moved all the way up to their forty. Uh, then the incompletion, incompletion, incompletion. Fourth down, ten. Uh, have to pick up like twenty yards again to field goal range. They pick up twenty five, but the time ran out when the catch when when the play was blown dead. But the refs cuddle up and give the Bears. One more second because they said the Bears were able to get a timeout with 0.2 seconds left to go in the game or some extreme bullshit like that. Line up. The Bears actually make a field goal and win the game. Fuck ref ball, dude. <laughs> Fucking, I, yeah. I, I know where I did the things we hate uh, um, segment, but this is another thing I hate. Ref ball, dude. Ref ball. It hurts. It, it really just hurts. Mm-hmm. Like, like. Oh man, that that was crushing. Absolutely, it has to be crushing for the players and the fans. And the coach. Yeah, let's just move on from that. Let's go into some UFC news. Of course, um, the, the day uh, before we we're recording this on the um on the Saturday the fourteenth, there was UFC uh, Vancouver fight night with uh, Cowboy Cerrone and Justin Gaethje. Um, is a main mm-hmm. event, Jalen. What did you think of this card? It was, I thought for a fight night, the main card was pretty damn solid. It was pretty solid. Uh, main card, all of them were great fights. All of them could have been stopped early. But um, they all ended up going, and not all of them went the distance. Um, what was it? Almost all of them went the distance except one. There is well two. There is two decisions and one no con. Um, sorry, no, and there are two no decisions contest. and one no contest. But, of course... Yes. In the first, to start off the main card, we had uh, Misha Kirk, um, Kirk, um, Kirkinov, sorry, Misha Kirkinov against uh, Jim Crute. We saw only one time in UFC history has the Peruvian necktie um, been busted out for a finish, and last night was the second time in UFC history that we saw the extremely rare Peruvian necktie uh, coming for the submission in round one. Did you see, that was insane. Yeah, no, it was crazy. They were going back and forth, playing oh, shots, fight. getting on the ground, going to the dominant position. And then just when it looks like Jim Crute's about to win it, pushing, Misha gets back on top, puts the necktie in, just lays back into it, Flips cranks Crute that over. neck. That Ooh. was, yeah, that was, it was such a good looking submission. You hardly see it too, so it's awesome to see live. Yeah, because at first, when he first started doing it, it looked like, okay, yeah, that's a weird guillotine. <laughs> right? When you really started sitting back into it. You're like, oh. <laughs> I've never seen a Peruvian necktie done before. Um, of course, I've seen the videos of it, but it was it was insane. I was not expecting him to bust that one out. No, I, I definitely did not. Moving on to uh, the next fight, we had a middleweight fight between Uriah Hall and Antonio Carlos Jr. What are your thoughts on this mm-hmm. one? Uh, this one was a great fight. Uh, Uriah Hall pretty much obviously is a way better stand-up fighter. Yes. It was from the first bell. He looked like the more dominant stand-up fighter. Antonio really did have a way better ground game, but he just couldn't get anything going on the ground. He held Uriah down for Especially in that third a good round. part of a couple of rounds. Yeah, that third round and a little bit of the second round. But it, he really wasn't doing any damage at all. See, it was a oh, dominant was position. But yeah. he, he just wasn't doing much. This fight finished um, a split decision, 28-27. No, sorry. Um, it was 29-27, Uriah Hall, on um, on a couple of the scorecards for the judges, which was surprising. Yeah, I I think Uriah, pretty much, because on the ground, Uriah did hold him for a good amount of times mm-hmm. to where he wasn't doing anything on the ground. So, yes, he was in dominant position on the ground, but he wasn't doing anything with uh-huh. it. He wasn't advancing. He wasn't landing any shots. I was just happy so I that like the ref didn't Uriah, stand him up. They don't stand him up in that situation just because such it is such a dominant mm-hmm. position that you work to get. Of course. They don't want to take you out of that position where you can do something from At least so the good refs you don't, want you to, like that. don't want to. Yeah, like if they were in half guard, just sitting there, they'd break that. But when you're when you're just sitting there with obviously uh, have his back, they're not gonna they're not gonna take you out of that position, even exactly. if you're not working really. That was all. So it it was more. I felt like Uriah on the feet 
was dominant. Mm-hmm. But I feel like Antonio on the ground, while he was in dominant position, he was not dominating the fight in that position. He was just, it was kind of just there. Yeah. So I feel like Uriah ended up winning the fight because when he was standing up, he was obviously the better fighter. And when they were on the ground, Antonio was the better fighter, but it wasn't as obvious as it was when Uriah was standing up. Yep. Of course, the fight after that was a welterweight fight between Michael uh, Pre- uh, Preya and Tristan Conley. Mm-hmm. Tristan Conley, actually um big underdog in this fight, making his UFC debut, took this fight on a week notice. Five days. And he notice. moved up a weight class for this fight, too. And he goes on to win via decision. A really impressive win yeah. by him, too. He dominated that um, uh, most of that fight. Of course, he had Michael yeah, in the first Michael, round coming out throwing yeah. like four flying knees, hitting like a uh, uh, damn, like, he had the rolling thunder. Flip. Yeah, he had two backflips. He also had the rolling thunder. <laughs> well, he didn't really land it, but he attempted it. <laughs> yeah. It looked so like he was like just like butt he smashing is a fighter. UFC yeah. 3 for half the fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just ran out of stamina. He just, he couldn't hold it up anymore, and then no, Connolly just got on him. That third round, Connolly yep. was just landing it, Will. It was bad. Yeah. And then when you have that home crowd behind you and it's your debut, you're just yeah. not going to let home, so, this uh, guy this, this fight, showboat do that. He um, currently lives in Vancouver, so the whole crowd was for him. It, yeah. was, it was fun to watch. Yeah, it was a great fight by him. Going into the fight, looking at the two, you're like, wow. He's a like, big He's going to destroy him. Yeah. Yeah, and then Connolly just came in there and pretty much manhandled him. Really good. Really good BJJ from him, too. Yeah. He had, he had probably like 10, 12 submission attempts. <laughs> like yeah, he, he, uh, he kept arm bars. Yeah, he went for a Kimura at one point. Yeah, the Kimura too. But um, saw fight. After that, we move into a nice heavyweight fight between the returning Todd Duffy. He took four years off. After a four-year layoff, yeah. Yep, against Jeff Hughes. Um, this fight was definitely the most... Well, it's hard to say. It, it was disappointing because... It ended in a no contest um, after an eye gouge um, by Jeff Hughes. Yeah, he kind of withdrew them after a push away. But yeah, the thing no, was, it was definitely before a good that, fight leading up to that. Yeah. Before that was a giant slugfest through that four, four minutes. Yeah, they were going back and forth. Todd Duffy was still rocked at one point. Right before that eye gouge, Jeff Hughes was pretty messed up. And then he got that eye poke. It was exciting and to like. He told the ref he was seeing double. Yeah. It yeah, sounded he like told he the didn't refusing want to fight, double, though, and then it got, yeah. which was the weird part. He yeah, it, looked, it didn't look like he wanted to fight at that point. It kind of looked like he didn't want to fight. Most fighters, even though it is a bad thing that fighters do, even if they can't they see, they're like, fight. let's go. Like, yeah, let's Cowboy, do this. He um, just, in, in yeah. um, July, I, I believe, against in June or July, against Tony Ferguson, has entire eye shut. And he still wants mm-hmm. to fight. Cowboy, of course, is just crazy. Uh, love that guy. Moving into uh, the co-main event, which is was a light heavyweight fight against Glover Texiera against Nikita Krylov. Um, this was a solid fight. Ended up going to the distance. Um, decision win for Glover. Um, what was your take on this one? Yeah, it was a, it was a good fight. Uh, back and forth, but I feel like Glover ended up getting the experience that he has. Ended up taking that. Yep. Um, I, this was the my bad. Besides the, the Todd Tuffy Jeff Fuse fight, this might have been the worst fight on the main card. But that's not that's not saying it was a bad fight at all. Card. It was just a good card. But so that of course brings us to our main event of UFC Vancouver, which was the lightweight fight w- uh with number four contender Cowboy Cerrone versus number five contender Gut uh Justin Gaethje. And uh, what a lot of the talk was is that it was Somewhat disappointing. Um, yeah, it, it was a watching, crazy fight. I kind of have to agree a little bit. Yeah. What do you think? What are your thoughts on that one? Um, I, I don't know. I think it's just kind of, it's fighting. It's <laughs> People are going to get knocked yeah. down. Of course, That's you're going to get stopped early. With a uh, TKO 418 into round one. Um, Justin Gaethje is your winner. Uh, they were they were throwing was, they were yeah, they were they were throwing hands. Cowboy was mm-hmm. taking shots though um through that first round and then about four minutes and he just took he took the like this right hook to the jaw. 
and um, drop yeah, down. He just he kept taking them. He the entire the one that was landing the most for Gaethje was that right hook. Yeah, and he, he just kept the whole fight. Um, landed right flush on the jaw, knocked him down, and uh, Gaethje got on top, finished him. That was about it. Yeah, and, and so, Gaethje was actually mad that the ref didn't stop it earlier. Yeah, because he said that the ref had said himself, "If you fall to your face, I'm gonna stop it." Yeah, and Donald Cerrone fell to his face about a good two times. Yeah, it was it was kind of hard to see, but of course, um, nothing can. It, Cowboy's way too far into his career. He's way too um, of, of a historic fighter to ever have a fight tarnish his legacy. Never going to happen. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a really great, cool. Great fighter, great guy. Yeah, exactly. Well, of course, after the fight, um, these guys are really good friends. Their their um their coaching staff is really good friends. Um, you saw after the fight, Gaethje's coach went over and put the ice bag on Donald Cerrone trying to take care of him. <laughs> but it was cool to see. Yeah, um, the course after family. after they um they only had um good things to say. Of course, yeah, Cowboy going the whole. Um, apologizing to the crowd that he couldn't go longer than Vera Show because just what he does, he he's just that good of a person. This is just cowboy. It, it, yeah. it it's hard to hear him say that because I feel bad for him, but it, he, he's just that amazing of a fighter and a person. Yeah. So, but all in all, that was a solid card for um for fight night, and next week we have. I'm not too thrilled about the main card, but I'm looking forward to uh, the Jeremy Stevens uh, fight in the main event. I think that should be a fun one. Yeah, no, that'd be a good one. And I feel like this Justin Gaethje win might set up a fight with Connor, especially since the fight ended so quickly. This is what I was I saying. I feel like that could set up for so, a fight later this year. I with think Connor. I think what happens next year when, please God, Ferguson fights Khabib for the title. Please, I'm mm-hmm. just just praying because that's the only thing that could make that fight happen at this point. But of course, we we all want yeah. to see that. And then after that, I want yeah. to see there. There's two things I want to see. I either want to see Gaethje fight the winner of Ferguson and Khabib, or Gaethje fight McGregor, and the winner of that fights the winner of um, Ferguson Khabib. Yeah. No, I, I would. I just want to see Conor return. Honestly, I want to see if he still has it. Uh, that's if, my main if thing. If they fought, who would win, Gaethje or Conor? I think Conor wins. If I Gaethje. I Throw, feel like, like it's a really I feel bad, like it's Gaethje yeah. fights a really bad style for Connor. Connor, of course, is one of the great counters um in history. And Gaethje absorbs mm. more. He he does have um the UFC he um in the UFC he has the highest um rate of significant strikes landed per minute, but he also takes the most significant strikes per minute. Yeah, and I don't think you could do that against Connor. Yeah. I, I feel like you take a couple of hands from Connor, you're not. They're not advancing anymore. That's why Gaethje, he's not going to challenge Connor. He's just going to challenge the winner of the the Khabib Ferguson fight, of course. I don't blame him. Yeah. But, you know, it's all a card. Um, hopefully that fight happens. That would be awesome to look forward to. So um, Yeah, no, it's definitely yeah. going to be good things to look forward to for the rest of this year. A couple big fights coming up. Israel Adesanya's fight. Oh, Whitaker, uh, versus, Israel, uh, Israel Adesanya uh, Whitaker in uh, Australia, October yeah. 5th. That's coming up real Fourth. soon. Oh shit! That right after that, um, in, in the in November's pay per view, you of course you have D- in, uh, Diaz versus <laughs> um Jorge Masvidal for the Bass motherfucker belt. Actual belt. <laughs> They're actually making a Dana's actually making a belt for that. I cannot wait to see it. I can't wait to see that oh, shit. I, I want the old UFC championship belt. But instead of UFC, it's BMF. I'd be down for yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Some WWE type shit. Dude, it is some WWE type shit, but it's fun. At the end of the day, that's it why is. some of these fighters are changing their styles. That's what you see out of um, Tyson Fury. He entertains first, and he's a fighter second. That's how you sell it, uh-huh. honestly. <laughs> Tyson Fury, did you see Tyson Fury after that fight last night? Oh, his eye was fucked up. But yeah, that he was looked pretty cut. dominant yeah. after, in like the the last um, half of the fight, he looked really dominant. Yeah, like he pretty much took it after a while, but that cut was nasty. Oh, he got a really deep cut over his right eye, but that was about it. Mm-hmm. Besides that, he he fucked up um, yeah. his opponent. 
So maybe moving on from little combat sports action, let's move on into the MLB. Uh, we, yep. I know this might not be your strong suit, considering you're a Giants fan, but um, we'll go easy. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they've only been out of the wild or the playoff race for like a couple months ago. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so of course we had breaking news, devastating, totally changing, um, possibly changing the landscape of the playoffs in the um, NL. Christian Yelich took a foul ball off of his kneecap, fractured it out six weeks. Um, the, the before this, the Brewers' playoff hopes were iffy, but the, without Christian Yelich, there's no way they make it, right? Yeah, I don't think it happens at all. Uh, I think that was pretty much like the lifeline of their team. And at this point, it's kind of just like, what the fuck are you going to do? Sorry, he was the only reason they were winning. And so now they're just kind of fucked <laughs> at this point. If, if we really just want to put it bluntly, of course, they still have a chance of making it. But that means they won't have Christian Yelich for the wild card and they won't have him for the divisional round. If they want Christian Yelich back, they'll have to make it all the way to the um, to, to the elite championship series and... There's no way the Brewers do that with Christian Yelich, right? Yeah, I think it would have been difficult with them. So I would thought him. I think it's pretty much impossible. Exactly. And news breaking earlier today um, at the time of recording this. Mike Trout is undergoing season-ending surgery on his foot. Um, this is really big news. Mike yeah. Definitely going to um, just really ha- allow the, the Angels to come to a pretty bad end. To a eh season, it yeah. Was. It was um, just it was a bad season for them all around, and um, it just it just kept getting worse. So I, so, I'm not sure how the voters and the writers are going to do this, but um, the implications this has on the um, this does not playoff implications. Angels have been long out of them, but um, it, it let's talk about the MVP race now. Of course, um, going to this, you had uh. Before this happened, you had Mike Trout, you had Alex Bregman, Xander Bogarts, and the Dark Horse and Matt Chapman. Um, Mm -hmm. Does this eliminate Mike Trout from MVP um, possibilities? I feel like Mike Trout can still win. I feel like the season's pretty much almost over. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much over at this point. Uh, Everything's pretty much summed up. He pretty much put in his case already. Exactly. So... I feel like this. I feel like he can still take it. I feel like this is still easily his. I feel like it's definitely going to hurt him, but um, and for his top two is Alex Bregman and and uh, Mike Trout. Trout mm-hmm. is I I think throughout the season has by far been better than Bregman. It, it before this news broke, I had like we talked about this last week. Um, I thought that Mike Trout was a lock for the AL MVP. Um. And I still think that he's going to win it. He might not be a lock anymore. But this mm-hmm. the surgery and him missing um, about around 11 games is going to hurt a little bit. But he's I think he still deserves that AL MVP. Yeah, I feel like he's he's made a statement. I feel like it's just exactly. 11 games is like, yeah, it's a good amount of games. But at the same time, it's like, it's him. It, so. It's still his. <laughs> It's still his. Yeah. Um, we'll see what the writers um, end up voting. But in my opinion and your opinion too, he should still win it. So moving on to other um, big MLB news is, of course, the wild card update. So moving um, as of today, we had – so as of today, uh, looking at the wild card in the AL, the A's – are in the first uh, first wild card spot, uh, up one and a half games on Tampa Bay, and then third place you have Cleveland that is one and a half games behind Tampa for that second spot, and then you got Boston who is pretty much out of it, um, nine games back of that second wild card spot. Of course, the A's are currently riding a six game winning streak. Um, during this week, they went into uh, Houston for a big time divisional uh, matchup, that four game series. It was a really strange series. So what happened, and let me break it down for you guys. Game one, the Strohs win 15 to nothing, absolutely demolishing the A's. But in game two, the A's win 21 to seven with each A's Crazy. player recording at least two hits. When the <laughs> shit does that happen? <laughs> when do you get blank 15 nothing, then go out the next day and win 21 seven? 
That's a determination. I think that just goes on shows you really the resiliency of the Oakland A's. Yeah, definitely. Um, that that's definitely going to help them coming towards the wild card, especially if they can get home wild card game. That'd be that'd be something else for them. Uh, yeah, it'll definitely to... give them a chance to make a push. Exactly. Uh, moving on to game three, the A's took that one five to three. Then game four, uh, the A's took that one three to two. So the next two games, yeah, it doesn't definitely... sound like the same series. Oh, not at all. Um, those last two games <laughs> definitely nothing close to what the first two were like. In game three, you actually had Ramon, um, you know, Razor Ramon Laureano, uh, the A's outfielder with a big arm. Uh, he gunned down Jose Altuve at home from deep right field. That was an impressive Great throw. Play. And it's been the whole season, and we still got people running on Laureano. Don't run on Ramon <laughs> Laureano. Just don't. He's gunned down like six people at the plate already this year. Insane. Yeah. He even bobbled the ball. He dropped it and still got Jose out by, by a solid 10 feet. Just, it's just remarkable. <laughs> Kind of embarrassing on, on uh, Jose piece. He should be a little faster than that. Um, but it was one hell of a play. Um, yeah, it was, it was a hell of a play. You, know, you don't see that every day. Yeah, these Oakland A's, they just um, – today they just finished up a three-game sweep against the Rangers, um, just making easy work of them. And they're sitting pretty in the wild card right now. They um, are moving. Yeah. Uh, their next series is going to be home versus Kansas City. Then they have a series against the Angels, and then they finish up the season with a series against Seattle. Um, so that ending, the, those last eleven games for the A's, that really works out in their favor. They should be able to take it it, it de- um, definitely seven out of eleven of these games. So yeah, it's definitely give them a push. Just got to secure that number one wild card spot, and they could really make a push. Of course, they just. Beat um, the Houston in a four-game series at home um, in Houston on this on the season. They're four and two against the Yankees, and they've had a really really competitive um, series against Minnesota. All three of those teams are the um, probable probable division winners, and that just really this A's team. I might sound like a homer right now, but this A's team could be really scary um, if they get past that wild card game. They could take on any yeah, one of those teams. And definitely. if I was a division winner, I would not want to take on the Oakland A's. Yeah, especially with the amount of runs they're putting up every game. Yes. Uh, they have a plus 152 run differential. Uh, Damn. Just solid numbers. Solid numbers. Um, they're on Crazy. Their last 10 games, they're 8-2. The A's are going streaking right now. And if they could keep this up through the end of the season, they're going to beat out the Rays for that number one wild card spot. Have a game in Oakland that's going to be hardly attended because of how giant that stadium is. Uh, fuck the Raiders. But, yeah. <laughs> Crazy stuff. Um, of course, we have Crazy that. Stuff. And then over in the NL, um, your division leaders are the Dodgers, the Braves, and the Cardinals. Um, and then your wildcard teams is Washington in the number one spot, up a game and a half on the Cubs. And the third spot... You have Milwaukee, who's only game back at the number two spot. And then the fourth spot, you actually have the New York Mets. They're only three and a half games out. They still have a chance. The Mets still have a chance to make the playoffs. What the fuck world are we living in, Jalen? Yeah, I don't I don't understand. I, I don't. <laughs> it's the fucking Twilight Zone. <laughs> it, <laughs> <laughs> but it's crazy world. So, man, in, in both leagues, that wild card race is definitely going to be something really fun to watch. Coming, it's really coming down to the wire. This is definitely the best time of year for baseball, without a doubt. Yes, it is. Um, besides that, of course, on Tuesday night, um, or so next week, starting on the 16th, we actually have the return of NHL hockey, the preseason is here. Yeah, we actually had a couple of games today. We did. The That's Golden right. Knights beat the Coyotes today 6-2. to two. Oh, I really cannot wait for that opening opening night game. Sharks at home against uh, Vegas. That has to be one of the top rivalries in hockey right now. It has to be. <laughs> it gets better and better every year, two years strong. Reeves and Kane are about to, uh, about to kill each other one of these days. 
It's it's not okay. It's not their rivalry is going somewhat unhealthy. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I, I, I they feel actually like want to kill each other. I think. It's sometime next year we have to see the two goalies go at it. Martin Jones will kick Flurry's ass. Fair. Nah, Flurry's gonna kick his ass. Nah, he's Martin gonna Jones, punch and he, he may be a Canadian, but way. but Flurry, he, he's the uh, he's French Canadian. Makes him one of the biggest pussies in the world. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's good at robbing goals. Martin Jones is going to steal his soul. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I'd watch that. I, I'd be so down for that fight. <laughs> yeah, no, I'd definitely pay to see that. Ooh, but, but the real question is the backups. Aaron Dell or um, Malcolm Subban? Obviously Subban. Oh, is, is it because he's, he's black? I think he's bigger also. Probably. <laughs> but he's also Canadian black. So does that... Is that is there a difference between that? I don't know. Let me let me. What, what's your background on this? One more time. It, it, like like where there's there's a difference, right? Like um, is there a difference between um, you know like American black and Canadian black? Um, I feel like there is. I feel like uh, Canadian blacks are a little bit less, you know, aggressive than American blacks. Okay, just just <laughs> for the record. This is Jalen saying this. This is not me saying this. this. Is, this I'm just is Jaylen, asking questions. This is Jalen, the African American male who runs the Twitter page. Yes, the head <laughs> of social this. media. <laughs> the head of social media At is a black male. Panthers pundit. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But let's. I want to end this podcast on a story that I found really, really cool. Um, of course, on the speaking of New York Mets earlier. Um, rookie sensation Pete Alonso. Uh, it was 9-11, of course, on Wednesday of this week. And what Pete Alonso did, so what Pete Alonso did is for every man on the roster, he actually went out and got everyone um custom 9-11 cleats. Um, showing mm-hmm. remembrance for the the lives that we lost during that tragic uh terrorist attack. And, Rest in peace. Yes, of course, man. Um Fuck you, Bin Laden. I hate you more yeah. than Boston fans. <laughs> but <laughs> just my in all seriousness, this is such a cool story. So Pete Alonso is only making five hundred and fifty five thousand this year, which is not much if we're talking MLB contracts. And so just in yeah. one night he went out and spent around eight thousand dollars of his own cash on cleats to, to serve as a remembrance on that night. Just good yeah. story, huh? Great guy. Honestly, um, definitely up there for uh, he's up there for the silver slugger. He's he's close in the in the league lead for home runs. Uh, yeah, of course he was a home run derby champ for this year. Um, definitely going to win yeah. NL. Um, yeah, he he was, but that was a pretty close one. Yes, <laughs> but just really cool story. Uh, we talk a lot of shit on this podcast. We say um, some fucked up stuff, but uh, it I just want to bring light to that because I, don't, I um of course it was big, but. I just want everyone, uh, as many, pe- many people as possible, to know about what he did. Really cool. Just, just really cool. Small, it was just cleats at the end of the day, but it, it's just it's, it's a cool act to see. And sometimes it's the small things. Exactly. Man, look at us actually being someone positive on this podcast. Positivity. It kind of hurts. Yeah, it does. Fuck the Patriots. Yeah, fuck. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fuck <it>, Boston. <laughs> okay, and with that, everyone, um, we're gonna wrap up here. Jalen, thank you very much for uh, coming back on for uh, another week, another uh, successful no week. All. I think we um, yeah. Got... I'll head back to my Twitter duties. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you gotta put a little work in. I think I just surpassed you over this weekend. You know. Mm. Yeah, he put in a couple tweets. I was, I was, I was off this weekend. This was my my weekend off. Oh, oh, so yeah. Ross has been in oh, charge so of tweeting just this last the week. week off because because of surgery. Eh, it's no big deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Ross has been in charge of the Twitter page for the last week. So. Oh, that's why we've, we've seen gone, the, we've gone downhill. the Twitter increase. <laughs> <laughs> we've gone quite downhill in the last week. Oh, I kiss my ass, Jalen. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to just just spin light on one of Ross's tweets this week. Uh, he made a, a comment saying that the Pac-12 was trash when a uh, a good amount of the Pac-12 is in the top twenty-five this week. Uh, Pac-12 was trash. Don't at me. 
Garbage. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for everyone <laughs> for tuning in. Of course, follow us on Twitter at Fourth Long Radio. Um, and catch us on YouTube and catch us on SoundCloud. Um, to, to wrap we up, will soon be expanding the Spotify and a couple other platforms just to get us out there. A little maybe, bit more. maybe we're in discussion. Maybe, maybe. we're maybe. looking into it. We're of looking course. into it. Just, see, just just follow. All you gotta do is follow the Twitter page, and you'll be up to date on everything. It's all you gotta yeah. do. It's super easy. Do. So um, super easy. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Kyler's short. Um, uh, fuck the Pac-12. They're weak. Mountain West is new. Uh, Power Five. Um, within five years, <laughs> um, fuck Boston and Jalen. Fuck yourself, dude. Okay. I will. I will. Ah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening, everyone. <laughs> we'll catch you next week. Catch you next week. <laughs>